is out of nowhere session of Final Fantasy Pathfinder. A little side session here. Uh, there's a lot of chores to get done here in Moonbright, and some people wanted to get to go and you wander around because we got like almost every single character is in a location independent of the other characters, and it would be maybe a bit <laughs> long to just keep running every individual person's thing. Yeah. So might as well break it up. We'll do a little side thing here. Get a little bit more screen time, you know, mixed in here midweek. And yeah. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, Final Fantasy is owned by Square Enix. Uh, Path Pathfinder is owned by Paizo. And the Final Fantasy, uh, the FFD20 rule system is made by, I can't remember his name. Does anyone else remember? I think it was Alex Willig? Willig? Something Willig. like that. Names if you look, if you look for FFD twenty, you'll find it online. It's a whole set of PDFs. It's amazing. That's what we're playing on. It's basically just Pathfinder, but with all the Final Fantasy classes. It's mostly fourteen, it's Alan I think. Willick, by the way. Alan Willick. Alan Willick. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Please, please don't sue. Please don't sue. It's still too loud. It's still too loud. I'm turning the master volume down. I gotta fix that. Yeah, here, maybe here, I'll turn this up and then I'll turn <coughs> this down. Are too loud? Oh, no, let me try to turn. Uh, uh, switch that up to... Just audio balancing things. Get you guys back up. Can you guys talk now? Yeah. Hello. Oh, too Hello. loud. Turn them back down. <laughs> <laughs> too far, too far. Um, How about now? Hello. How about now? That's acceptable. Yep. Okay, we're good to go. Well, that is acceptable. <laughs> All right. So where we left off, uh, as you see on the map, luckily, because I've been keeping pins to keep track of a little ant scattering to the winds. Uh, <laughs> Chef is over there by the mysterious house. Uh, Koke and Vis are just outside of the alleyway with a little chat last time. Eleanor is on her way to go pick up the airship fuel, the Aether fuel. Uh, Tyro, Nell, and Echo are just post meeting up with uh, with Urus, uh, Nell's grand uncle, great uncle, um, to ask about uh, Professor. Got to double make sure I got my book here. Hang on, oop, oop, oop. <sighs> Professor X in fancy, fancy notebook I for. Did. See, this is why Echo can't talk because if you said that in front of her. <laughs> Uh, Dias. Dias <laughs> Vim. Oh, yeah. Vim, too. <clears throat> so, yeah. I got some gunk in my throat, sorry. We're here. Uh, we've got kind of half ish of the party hanging around. What are you guys up to? Uh, is Oris still within healing range? Is who still within healing range? Oris. Oris? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's. He, he, you could you could turn around. You guys have like just walked away from him like eight seconds ago. Resuming oh, yeah. here. The whole joke chipping thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually gonna is... wait to get his attention what again. Uh, about to ask him something. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uncle, question. I, as you can tell, we this bird can cast magic, and we are an obvious magic wing. Is there anybody mm -hmm. in this area that would possibly know anything about? A, Bird being able to cast white magic. Bird being able to cast white magic. There's nothing I've ever heard of. I mean, we've we've chocobo that can uh, there's some sort of some spells here and there. Uh, um, black chocobo cast a meteor, call it down from the sky. It's amazing stuff. Uh, <laughs> healing magic. Well, just from a regular yellow chocobo, that, that's unheard of. Um, perhaps you could ask the white enclave if you're just looking for things about white magic. Um, they're, Third. yeah, just, yeah, he kind of, like, takes a couple steps over to a sort of, uh, you know, directory list with a map, and he kind of points, just past here, after the, uh, after the, the, the reds here, and he kind of points to this whole section, it's, uh, the dorms are all laid out by, uh, by school here, uh, past them, this far corner, over behind where the colorless are, you find the white enclave. That it's um, it's very small. It's two buildings, uh, kind of dorms and a little bit of a faculty space. They don't they don't have a whole lot of presence here. The whites. It's mostly if 
you're really looking to train in white magic, you go to you go to uh, Abaddon City. You go and study at the Tower of the Whites. But we got a little group here. If you want to ask them questions, uh, they're very kind people. I think it's just kind of their nature. Odd uh, that there's only two buildings in the entire city. But uh, look over at Echo. Uh, do you want to check it Great. out? Great. I can't tell what the yes we or no we. <laughs> Nod, Nod your please. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, that is one smart bird. I wasn't lying. Uh. But thank you much. And yes, I, I will see Aline later. Promise. Mm. Please do. So heading out then. Uh, I already talked to uh, Itchy earlier. He said pretty much just have Tyro just follow in the. Let's agree that if I do run to Eleanor, I'll probably go and he'll be heading towards, you know, that professor area. So mm -hmm. he's going to be ghosted. All right. Um, on the map. Here, <coughs> hmm? What about these the map? Are, this, this, this area here, is mm -hmm. that pre-forming arts? Yes, that's performing. Yeah, pre-pre-forming arts, not performing arts. That's a typo. <laughs> I like to think it says that the on the arts, building too, though. The arts of Pre-forming. I, I, I want to imagine that too. It's it's about uh, it's about psychology and early and early adolescence. It's pre-forming arts. So, what are you guys up to? You heading over to the White Enclave? You. <coughs> We'd probably run into Eleanor halfway there unless they move, so yeah, mm -hmm. start heading out. Uh, yeah, and actually, yeah, as, as you guys exit, you guys backtrack kind of through the same corridors that you came in through. You'll exit back onto Chroma Square, on the uh, kind of right near the, the main entrance to the lecture spaces for uh, Ursa Mora. And as you cross start crossing <coughs> across the commons, with any degree of attention, you'll probably notice the big white dog coming towards you along the same outer path that you guys are on. Mm. Her and her <laughs> everything white. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't stand out at all. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit of a rainbow of stuff here by some by yeah. some extent, but still, big big white armored dog that you you recognize, you know. <laughs> so yeah. Just be walking down walking down the street. <clears throat> the two of you bump into each other probably around here between the junction of the. Uh, Court of the Blacks and Reds. What's about color with these people? <laughs> was that? It was, it was a very poor mm -hmm. taste. Well, sorry. <laughs> it's all racial. All of it. <laughs> these damn the blues. Not, not the racism. <laughs> all right. hmm? Oh, hello. Oh, did one split up? What was that? I was just saying, oh, did everyone split up? Seems so. Hmm. Well, uh, I was about to possibly tech echo to the White Maze Enclave. They seem pretty interested. Uh, where are you heading off to? Uh, I gotta look at the name again. Moon Tech, the Student Union Moon Building. Yeah. Moon Tech, thank you. <laughs> I'm heading down to Moon Tech to pick up our Aether Fuel. That's the reason we're here, after all. Right. Do little bubble <laughs> flash memory. You realize that Chemistry Building is, like, right by there. Uh, I actually have business uh, near that building there. If you want, uh, you can tag with us to the Enclave, and then we can head towards the fuel. And basically, I have business in a building that's, like, right next to there. So if you want to head immediately there, that's understandable, but... <clears throat> Well, I suppose I'm I'm not in a hurry. Yeah, I could tag along. Why are you going to the White Enclave? Well, Which... Echo can cast white magics, and they seem pretty interested in it, so... Great. I'm not sure if they'll be able to understand why Echo can cast white magic any more than we do, but it could be worth a look. How you doing? She'd attempt to uh, give you a pet. 
Wait, what? <laughs> okay. Not you. Yes. I was like, what the hell? No, the as, bird. <laughs> as, 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 she, as Eleanor reaches <laughs> reaches her hand out, and like you're like, oh, is she going to... Goes for the bird. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> I'm blaming Derpness on this one. <clears throat> okay. Just, just sort of, just sort of, okay, you pet me, kind of look. Yeah. I, I don't know you very well as much as we've been together. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Stranger danger. <laughs> Does Echo even really know any of us really that well? <laughs> Does anyone just know you. Echo that well? <laughs> exactly. Well, it's nice to see she's keeping it together in a big city. At least for now. I mean, she mostly seems to have problems with like math attack and whatnot. They don't really seem to be that bad around here. Mm. At least in this current wing. All right. All right, well, to the... uh, lead on, I suppose. I don't know where it is. Ah, uh, right. Look at the <coughs> map. Mm -hmm. Head yeah. up north. <clears throat> and you, you follow the kind of path that your your uncle laid out for you, and you travel between these two. Uh, double checking what day it is here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're still in the tent. See, as as you're walking through, there's still spells kind of whizzing back and forth between the buildings above you. Uh, you know, there's a couple of students kind of all cluster around somebody and they, in a big burst, throw them all off and then dive away down another alleyway. It's all very dangerous looking, but... Are they well out of range, at least? Uh, not really. It's kind of going right, right past you in some moments. Just rushing along. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck kind of neighborhood was this? The gang's all here. Let's go. Right now. <laughs> oh, God. Hey. It's a little concerning that they can just do that, but I guess it's tradition. It's Apparently, it can get really crazy around this time of year, according to Uncle's letters, but as long as we don't get hit by anything, I think we're good. <clears throat> yeah. After a few minutes uh, walking on this next uh, road, you come across the front of the White Enclave, which is a somewhat pristine-looking building, uh, kind of tidy and, and almost gated. It looks almost like an embassy at the corner of all this. And there it is. You guys going in? What's going in? All right. You walk to the front door. Uh, hmm? Real quick, can I? Am I? Am I allowed to jump in? Roll twenty. Ah, uh, sure, sure. If, if you want, I mean, we're just we're just kind of trying to, to get through some other stuff. This, okay, yeah, you, yeah. We are streaming Lyra, just as a note. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're, we're streaming. I'm, right I'm not gonna I'm not gonna participate. I just want to okay. watch. I'll just stay in polite conversations and whatnot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, we're just we're just trying to make this a short couple hour. Bang, everyone bang out the stuff they want to get done here. Yep. Kind of deal. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but yeah, you can show up at the White Enclave. You go in the front door. You're meeted. You're meeted. You're greeted by a uh, woman at a sort of uh, entry desk. Um, hello there. Um, how? Uh, welcome to the White Enclave. Can I help you with anything? Oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Echo. I have a bit of a uh, odd situation for you. <laughs> Ah, um, okay. I'm, I'm pleased to answer any questions you might have, especially regarding uh, white magics or enrollment. Well, not so much yeah, enrollment. Yeah. Uh, it is white magics, as... Oh, yes, okay. Uh... You had quite a bird there. Um, we usually do ask that uh, the your, your mount remains outside uh, <laughs> for the sake of this. I mean, she's fine if you want to just keep him here in the lobby, but I would ask you to posit him at maybe a stable or something if you plan to explore the rest of the, I... our facilities. That's actually what we are here for. Uh, not a mount. Meet Echo, uh, who can apparently cast white magic. Uh, a, ch a chocobo that can cast white magic. Um, you, If you don't mind me saying, this appears to be a regular uh, yellow chocobo. Am I right? It appears to be so, yes. But uh... They're... 
it's pretty well established. Very rare species of chocobo are capable of any kind of magic, let alone sta- stock standard white magics. Um, I, I'm afraid you you might be mistaken. It's possible somebody's put you up to this. Are you are you familiar with Professor Ors? Uh, uh yeah. I, don't know, I I think I've I've met with him I, once or twice, maybe. He I can. Cast, he can vouch. I cast. I cast lesser cunning on the person. Oh, whoa, You're gonna whoa. make her smart. You're gonna make her smarter. Okay. <laughs> um, well, see how she needs it right now. <laughs> Well, there. Ah. Uh, uh, well, this is. <laughs> she kind of like stops and like gathers her thoughts for a second, kind of like leans in. Okay, who put you up to this? It's one of the. It's one of the other mages. One of the other in the whites. I get it. I get it. You see any other mages right? around here? I mean, I can't cast spells or beans, and I'm sh- my paladin friend can like heal you, but not. Like that. May you go ahead and make a diplomacy check. <laughs> okay. You know what? Just just because of this person is sort of being an ass, I am going to do this with my R on. All right. <clears throat> and what's your what's your aura bonus? Plus three to charisma. Plus four. It's got a, four. the uh, charisma ban added an additional so four. Is that a so it's plus four modifier or plus? Yeah. It's a plus four even modifier. With a, even with a five, that's. <laughs> Jesus. Even with a five, you roll a 24. <clears throat> okay. I, I want to roll diplomacy too. <laughs> as, yeah. as, the bird, the as the bird, as the bird cocks its head in a way that's, that Echo thinks will assist her, but. She doesn't really like. No, it's a fucking bird. Uh, it's really. This isn't a prank. <laughs> we've been we've been traveling with Echo for a while now. She's been healing us during conflict. Well, I don't recognize you guys, so I'm assuming you're from out of town. I guess. Um, yes. I don't. I couldn't imagine that. Really, though. This is just, this is true. I've never seen anything like this before in my life. Uh, no one has. Um, I could. Do you want me to? I could get some some higher faculty. I could, might be able to get a couple of professors or something. Kind of take a look at him. Uh, is that a him? Is it a her? Um, uh, her. Uh, silly <clears throat> question. Do you happen to have any? This seems to be a, a magic hub. Anyone that could possibly speak with animals? Uh, speak with animals. Ah, uh, I should say so. Let me go and double check the fucking spell lists for As Final Fantasy. Brat, for we could just ask Echo directly herself. I know there's stuff in informal Pathfinder, but they probably wouldn't have access to the old Pathfinder spell books. No. I'm, I'm just thinking, like, okay, mm-hmm. we can, we could, we could talk to you now, Echo. What do you want to say? I could talk, 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 yeah. and spell canceled. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm just imagining, oh. like, you fucking idiots, treating me like an animal for how long? They're like, oh god. <laughs> I already talked to. Uh, what was her name? Kaya. Yeah, yeah. Kaya. 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 But no, but but nobody bothered to ask her. We were all busy that week. Yeah, we were all busy. <laughs> uh, anyway. I'm literally looking that's through. A, oh, here it is. That's that's the funniest part. Like, Bam. now you guys want to listen to me. Um, yes, we, we absolutely could. Um, we could. I could get somebody, a, a higher level uh, white mage from our staff here, and attempt to communicate with it. Talk about they're intelligent creatures, but the conversations you usually get from them aren't. I mean, intelligence is a very wide term. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. And she kind of scurries away at a doorway. And... Yeah. Just imagining a saltier and saltier part. Yeah. She's probably just imagining the only thing she's going to get out of Echo is basically that. Mine, mine, mine. <laughs> like, ooh, this ooh, house. Oh, is this a building? Is there food in here? I don't know. What's going on? Yeah. <clears throat> After a few minutes, um, <clears throat> a few minutes, she comes back downstairs, <clears throat> comes back in through the doorway with a um, kind of an older woman there with her. 
Um, okay, uh, this is Dean Fortner. Um, she's a very talented white mage, and she will now attempt to communicate with your, um, with your bird. Uh, and she, she kind of, like, stops and, like, looks at her, like, Really? This is what you called me here for? Good afternoon. Hello there. <clears throat> uh, now we may want to uh, get out of the doorway here. Oh, right. We never really got in. Yep. <laughs> Move that out of the way. Um, man, sorry. I'm, uh, somebody was calling me from off camera. It's okay. Uh, well, I already came down here, so let's give this a try. And she walks over. She raises up her hands. She casts a spell. She looks to you, Echo. Well, hello there. Hi. Hello. <laughs> this is a good start. <clears throat> I take it from what I understand that you can cast white magic. I Just... think that's what, that's what everyone calls it. Huh. Mm hmm. Uh, could you cast some of that magic for me? I already cast some. I don't have only so much. Okay. Well, I. Uh... Yeah, meanwhile, everybody else in the room is just hearing, talk, qui, talk, qui, talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Well, we've only got about an hour and a half of this, so <clears throat> uh, there's not a whole lot I can do to to substantiate this. Hang on, let me... And she kind of has a uh, got her little like leather satchel with her, kind of a little professor thing. And it goes through, just got like papers and papers and papers. And in one of the side pockets, she pulls out a scroll. And she uh, reaches out and she holds it up to you. Uh, could you understand this for me? And she pff, unfurls the scroll in front of your face. It's funny, that was weird. Doodly, doodly papers. It is one of those doodly papers. Um, in theory, even if you have a, if you have difficulty with, um, with written language, you should be able to decipher the runes intuitively based on your understanding of white magic. If you would like to give it a look over for me, that would be very I, nice. I am. And you look I over am. it and it's triangles and lines and runic symbols and ideas and. Do I need to roll anything? Uh, do you, I don't think you do. It's, uh, it's in your spell book. And it's a spell that you know how to cast, so I think it just... Right? Okay. I, I'm understanding the scrolls right there, right? Yeah, I think... Oh, I mean, I... I, I Read I magic is though. usually how it works in normal yeah. Pathfinder. Uh, um, I'll check the scroll. What happens if you try to read a spell that you already know, though? Nothing, it's just, typically. It's basically <clears throat> just identifying in a new belief. You're just basically, uh, oh, yeah, I know that. Where's your scroll? Must reveal read the spells on several conditions. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, you, I, I would like a spellcraft check from you to decipher the scroll and to understand what it is. I don't actually have spellcraft. You don't have spell. Oh. And that is a Todd ability. Yeah, no, you can't even. Um. <laughs> do you do you tell her? Do you tell her that you you don't know what the spell is? Well, I mean. I was able to learn the one scroll, so I mean, there's I mean, gotta be something. Can you, sort of... Do you have the cantrip read magic? I mean, I can replace it. I mean, Activating. I have detect magic, but I, I, could, I could swap that out for read magic unless you just rather me. I don't know. Because I haven't really used detect magic either. No. There we go. If the user meets all the requirements noted above and our caster level, is at least equal to the spell's level, which it is. Uh, she can automatically activate the spell without a check. So yeah, you yeah, you, you look through it. You okay, yeah. after after a few moments, you focus on it, and oh, you you know, it, yeah, this is this fucking super low level spell. It's just dancing lights, and you think about it, and pff, 
the spell ignites, like the, the scroll ignites in her hands and just incinerates from the bottom. And she just instinctively lets go of it as it does. She's just like, oh. And uh, up to four lights that resemble lanterns or torches and cast that amount of light. Uh, I, de- hmm? I don't actually, I don't actually, because, because. You don't. White Mage doesn't just have doesn't just have cantrips. They uh, they have to they get well, they, one. Well, you cast it off the scroll. That's if the if the if the scroll is a spell, here. you could potentially learn yeah. it works. Yeah, I, uh, and, and her cast level is equal to the spell's level. As you can, yeah. Uh, I could have learned it. Is what I'm getting at. Well, so you, you could have learned it. Could have, but too late. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, spell well, spell must be the correct type. User must have it on her class's spell list, and you must have the requisite ability score. And if your caster level is equal to the spell's caster level, you're done. It just goes. You don't even need to know the spell specifically. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, it's just like, it could have learned it. You, you, you said yeah. I already had it, so I, I thought... Well, well, yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was thinking. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so like, man, that da- that dancing light scroll later is gonna break the bank. <laughs> yeah, it's like a fucking hundred, like hundred gill scroll. But what the pretty lights? Lights, lights <laughs> float around in the room, and everyone kind of stops for a couple moments and looks around. Well, well then, ah, uh, that I couldn't imagine. There's any other better explanation? Yes, your 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 bird can. Can cast white magic. Um, how did you come across this creature? Uh, Believe in a forest fighting goblins. I found found them in the woods. You found them in the woods. Um, if you um don't mind me asking, where did you come from? I don't know. It was scary. Do you remember anything? It was, it was, it was, it was very metal and enclosed. Enclosed metal. Were there, were there people there? Do you remember seeing any people? People in white coats. White coats. I might have something here. An insane asylum? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Nell takes out the the token that was found on a uh, on Echo way way back in Lowland. Shows it to her. Oh, she kind of like takes this... it in her hand. Oh. When did this you is... find that, Nell? Uh, it was found on Echo when we were outfitting her with the barding way way back in Lowland. Mm-hmm. Oh. It says D one seven seven dash B two. Yeah, there it is. Uh, I, 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 I escaped and they and they and I escaped and I ran and then I was I just, eventually I just found these people. Well, I'm, yeah. Huh. You gonna like picks up the note two one one two one seven seven dash B two uh, this is um a, a, a label maybe or a, a, an address. I, I don't. It sounds like you. It was some sort of laboratory. Uh, white that, coats. Hey. Hmm. What was that? Is that is that what she's saying? Ah, yeah. Um, you can't hear. Her. Um. She's just. What I'm gleaning here. She escaped from some sort of subterranean laboratory. Uh, something heavy metal Sub- structure. Uh, subterranean. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Long word. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> with white coats, people, men in white coats. That sounds like a science team. Uh, that perhaps may explain your chocobo's uncanny abilities. <clears throat> Where did you find them? Where, where did you, uh, and she kind of like starts fumbling through her little satchel for a map. Pretty close to Lullen, I believe. Lullen? Lullen? 
and it pulls out a, the big old world map thing that you guys have all had. In, mm-hmm. in fact, the same world map. I mean, yeah. No offense, Eleanor, but I, I doubt anyone in your uh, kingdom was, was a part of this. <laughs> I don't know. They did hurty things. <clears throat> I don't like them. Hurty, hurty things. Oh, yeah. God, how the... What could have even... And she kind of like finds a little hair lolan. How long were you running uh, before you found them? I don't know. Hmm. How many I... suns? It got sunny again. Um, twice sunny, three times sunny. I I can't know. This is kind of one of those. Uh, things. go ahead and make a um. Go ahead and make a wisdom or intelligence. Maybe yeah, I'm gonna go with memory uh, is usually wisdom. I'm gonna go with wisdom. Make make a make a wisdom check for me. I'm just thinking like gully drawers with like three, no more than three, and it's really like fifty or something. I can't count. I can't count higher than three or four. I don't think so. Ball. No wonder your heels are so low. <laughs> I actually run some calculations here real quick. Uh, check about land speeds. 48 a day, right? 48 miles a day? I think so. Well, I have run feet, so... Oh, yeah, actually, no, you have super... You have even faster than that. Well, well but you can't you can't run non-stop for overland travel, because... Well, right, there, is a, right. there is a difference between travel speed and sprinting. Yeah. <laughs> Just go with 48. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> with it's a 9. Average. With a nine. Well, how many days would you think with a nine? More by than three. By your best reckoning. <laughs> well, no, it's, it, it's, it's in fact exactly three. But by your by your best reckoning, it would have been two days, maybe. Two sunrise and sets is hard to remember. I just wanted to get away. Mm. And you, you you can't recall uh, how many days are maybe two maybe two two days you say one two maybe two maybe two mm. maybe two well that doesn't give us very far here uh here, and I will real quick glance the party over to the map. She draws a line on her map, a red circle around Lolan. Yeah. At at that speed, at the Chocobo standard overland travel speed, you would have been running from somewhere within this ring. So, Where exactly was it? Was it the temple again? I'm trying to exact, remember exactly where. Uh, was down like hereish, eh, eh, thereish, right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I... So that's around the area where we found <coughs> found her. I just, I can't even imagine that there would be a place that experiments on Chocobo near my city. More likely How than you think. She... More likely than she... damn it. <laughs> Quickly, go! But how does she know it's underground, though? I mean, uh, the I the the way the way that you describe the 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 steel construction, usually that isn't that isn't indicative of an overland building. You know why why bother using metal if you're trying to avoid unless you're trying to avoid like rot or something. Uh. Above ground, probably people would know about it. Echo, when we have time, um, I'll search that area for you. (laughs) It's all you hear, but I mean, Mm -hmm. probably hearing. Okay. (laughs) Oh, wait, this is the island. 
Too far. I I just I had no idea. Well, I I saw how P I saw I, I saw them with well them they like to use spells and things to <clears throat> control animals. So I I I I did that too. Oh. You picked up on on their ability to uh, on their ability to con control animals. You say that sounds like a tamer, right? Kind of like tamer. looks over. Yeah, there's a um a, a school of. It's kind of a magic. It's also kind of a um. Oh, just kind of a natural intuition. Uh, a, a type of person that practices either the domination or um, alliance, if that's the best word, of animals. Um, Didn't we see Echo do something weird with the cactar two you, days ago? You did see her bunker cactar that then T-posed off true. into the horizon. <laughs> 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 yeah, she... She pulled out a bell and did something to a monster we were fighting. Hmm. Pulls out bell. Ding, ling, ling, ling. Oh. Where the hell? Where were you keeping that? <laughs> <laughs> and nobody knows. I uh, want to know. Within, within a couple of moments, the front door of the White Enclave poof, bashes open and a little cactar slides in. <laughs> and is standing next to Echo. Immediate sidestep. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I can't actually do that, but... <laughs> for for the fine. sake of this, you you fucking you summon it as though as though <laughs> using an attack, and it's there for a couple moments. Looks around. <laughs> hey, everybody! What is, I'm out. And as quickly as it came, it left through, so sort of leaves yeah. through the same door and back out into the forest. It's just like, which the funny part is that is exactly the kind of shit a cactor does. Yep. <laughs> Go, come on, come on screen, do something, and then just, <laughs> just, just diagonal wow. walk off. <clears throat> and y you pick that up just by watching them? Great. That's, yes. that's quite remarkable. Uh, I don't even know. I watched them play with the latch on the, on the room that that I was in and I I moved it and it opened and then I ran and then I jumped out of a vent I think it was a vent I think that's what they called it <coughs> I heard them saying he was she's in the vent oh. when I was jumping out yeah, definitely ventilated that moment and I put air in and air out this is quite a sophisticated sort of thing that you're describing here. How could such a thing be so easily concealed? Uh, surely, and she gestures to you, Eleanor, I see your colors and, and your, your comments so far. As a knight of Lullen, you would be aware of such a thing in your... Of course. Mm. But That's quite strange. I've never heard of anything like this. They must be working outside of the law. I should say so, yes. Um, the sort of severity of experimentation that you're talking about uh, violates many issues of, of, of cruelty. It's the sort of thing that is outright banned from this city, at least. Anywhere. Um, I don't know. You've you've stum stumbled upon quite a mystery between all of you. It's it's really hard to say. Yeah. Uh, again, various chocobo do naturally possess the capacity to cast various magics, and it's possible that may be what this all stems from. If you catch my meaning. So do you think do you think people were trying to draw out 
more magic from animals? It's possible. It's possible they were trying to find a chocobo that would have the capabilities of all of them, maybe. Uh, I, that's the only way that I could imagine you would you develop a creature quite so magically versatile as, as your companion here. Uh, it's just speculation, though. So, wait, Echo is going to start dropping meteors, <clears throat> are they? <laughs> I honestly have no idea. I don't know what's going on in there, and she kind of, like, pets okay, the side of Chocobo. <laughs> uh, in where? <sighs> in in you, uh, Echo, I think her name was. Yes, There's... Echo. Yes, Echo. You've got some magic in you. That I don't know what's going on with it. And honestly, it's a little scary. It's mostly exciting, I think. She appears to be healthy, at least. But it is unnerving a little bit that such a place would exist. I don't know. I'll, I will speak with Germond when we return to Lullen. Mm -hmm. uh, Germond... Germ See the, uh, he's the, the current. Oh, my lord, my lord commander. Ah, yes, okay. <clears throat> yeah, Olin's an interesting place. It's a, it's a very historically prone city, you know. It's so small, but the footprints it's had on the world over it. I don't know. It's, it's something that's really just fun to study. I've lived there my whole life. Well. You've come from a very nice place. I've never had a chance to journey over there. <clears throat> I wish I could be more help to you, though. I, there's not a... You might ask some of the scholars down in... Um, down in Moon Tech and the, the Moon Bright Institute of Technology if you... If you wanted to look for things that involve uh, Chocobo and magic and the sorts of technologies around that, uh, field of study, uh, you might be able to find something uh, historical. I don't know. You go and ask uh, Department of ooh, I don't know if that's sociology, if that's anthropology. Um, I don't think there's a precedent for this though, so that's maybe a dead end. Um. Yeah. Yes. Do you have the other day they held. Uh, friend Koke gave hand held out doodly paper, and it made me learn learn magic of make smart. <laughs> learn ah yes, uh, <laughs> the cunning. Yes, uh, you that was a scroll. That's the same thing that I just presented to you just now. No, uh, what what about them? <laughs> Do you have another? Can I, I too. They're quite costly. Point? Uh, let me see what I have in here. Possibly. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine, ten, What is money? 11, Wait, why is he going on about Gil? What is, I don't have Gil. <laughs> She's asking if she can learn more scrolls. Uh, she... about, in character, we don't know what uh, Echo's... Oh, I thought I thought you were out of character there. Okay. No, I'm just thinking, like, now it's her mind, like, well, it's really, really short right now. Oh, oh, okay. I have a scroll here of read magic. I have a scroll here of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Why would seven. you carry around scrolls with cat traps? I have enhanced diplomacy. <laughs> He's a professor, maybe. A dean, even like teaching yeah. people stuff. Just yeah. it's it's mostly just uh, minor stuff, just reference materials. I. <laughs> I, we, we could have somebody scribe you something uh, stronger I could even do it myself though I'm quite a bit busy right now uh, what are you what are you trying to learn here anything three. <laughs> one, three. do you have create water do you have shake head I uh, don't know that go okay. fish Go fish. Well, Wait, here, water. go ahead and try to learn this then. And she holds out a scroll of create water to you. This won't go bad at all. Hmm? Uh, <laughs> read that, yeah. please. 
Uh, yeah, if you're you are if you you being made aware of exactly which spell it contains. <coughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, no, and it, after a few moments of, of contemplation, incinerates from the bottom up, <laughs> scroll bursts into flames, <sighs> you now know the cantrip, create water. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well, now you won't starve, it's between your greens and water. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you! In, and also, a maybe sort of uncanny role here, I do have the first level spell Chocobo Hall. What? Um, <laughs> that's racist. I'm, I'm not meaning to be offensive here. It's really just what the numbers kind of randomized, but oh, no. do you know this one yet? Or <laughs> Shake head. Uh, wow. if, if you have the capacity to cast first level spells, you can try if you you can scribe, you can learn that's it. Amazing. Look at noodles. Yeah. And yeah, you, you glance over for a couple seconds. Oh, it's kind of like how a chocobo carries stuff, but with magic. But I am a chocobo, but with magic. And then pff, scroll incinerates. <laughs> and you now learn chocobo hall. And if you can cast for some spells, you can cast it. Uh, which, yeah, card targets carrying capacity triples for two hours per level. <laughs> Literally, like I rolled a, a, a d12 just to for the spell lists here for yeah. what random scrolls she has. It's like Chocobo Hall, really, really. <laughs> well, she's an old lady, I guess it makes sense. <laughs> well, we're just watching Echo just burn scrolls for some reason. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. that's really all I'm comfortable kind of sparing here. It's it's fascinating to watch, at least though. Uh, is there anything else we can help you with here? I I have a lot to think about. <laughs> I imagine so. Okay. Hey, no? Thank you for spells. Andy. No. Well, that um, certainly answers the questions. Uh, excuse me, before we leave... Yes. Would you happen to have... Um, Another one of the, uh, if I'm understanding correctly, uh, one of those scrolls that will let other people speak to Echo. Ah, I, hmm. I don't have one on me. I could run to my office real quick and pick one of those up. I've, I've got some stuff just stored. You've got to be a pretty high level caster to be able to uh, even use that. Give me a second. I see. She runs off. And she'd look Ooh. over at Nell. Maybe T Rowe can cast it. Maybe if uh Red Meets Red nah, if Red Meets can learn it. Yeah. <laughs> After a few minutes she comes back down with a scroll. This is a bit more of an expensive one, but I think you guys probably could use all the help you can get with this interesting creature. It hands you a scroll. It's a scroll of tongues. If you can find an astrologian, or a black mage, or a white mage, or a red mage that's capable of casting fourth level spells. They'll be able to cast it. You know it. a red mage, actually. You said it's fourth level? Fourth level. So, you know, high level is that level seven. It's all very complicated. It's very technical magic stuff. But, um, yeah. If you can yeah, find someone to cast it, a... that helps you. Yeah. How much we, do have you have a, we have a red mage in our, bar, in our group. No, no trouble. It's fine. Thank you. Going to give it away. I gladly appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's really the least I can do here for you guys. Uh, I'll have to make note of this. I'll I got some letters to send. Even this is exciting. She kind of looks over to the uh, the kind of graduate student that was <laughs> tending the table. Hmm. Uh, well, if you don't have any other questions, I. Uh, Feel free to stop by any time. I've I've got to get back to my work here though. I've got another class in Ooh, okay. Um <laughs> Well, you can tell them the truth. You were talking to a very smart chocobo. That's actually a good way to start the lesson today, maybe. 
I'll catch you guys later. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> she hurries out the door real quick. Okay. Um, is there anything else you guys needed before uh, you set out? Uh, I, we have we have lots of facilities. If you needed to stay for a little while, uh, I don't know how long you're going to be in town. We have uh, board and uh, an inn deep ah, in town. Wonderful. Okay. Um, if I may, hmm? she put a hand on her hip. How long does it take for someone who's not magically inclined to learn? Ah, you. Uh, I mean, in some small ways, it depends on your own of personal affinities for these sorts of things. Um, some people, it could take them years. Um, adventurers can sometimes tend to be a little bit more flexible with their uh, with their learning. It can really pick it up overnight. You might be able to pick it up overnight <laughs> if you just get enough experience points. Maybe it takes a long time to accrue that much experience points in lectures. Uh, <laughs> If it depends on really what you're what you're aiming for here. Um, I I, I, mean, would, I would like to, I would like to eventually learn white magic. Uh, she gets very a, she says very shyly. That's a that's a quite <laughs> splendid little undertaking you've got there. Uh, I could recommend a few things. Uh, you could stay here. You could attend some lectures. Uh, we can see how it goes. Maybe take a couple aptitude tests. Um, if you're looking for some more advanced uh, training, though, I would highly recommend you making the journey to, uh, to Abaddon City and maybe studying at the Tower of the Whites. Uh, the Faith is a little right. more protective of their white magics, and their best professors are all there. They snipe those out from under us all the time. <laughs> but, all yeah, right. uh, it's, it would be a good place to learn, too. It depends on how much time you have, and again, your affinity. Uh, well, we can see. You, Is you... that true for all magic, or just white magic? Yeah, uh, a different, again, different magics, different sorts of affinity. You, for instance, uh, I'm getting a kind of protector vibe from you, aren't I? You strike me as a... I don't know, um... That strong but soft kind of woman, you know? That's... <laughs> That's that's perfect for white magic. White magic, it's it's intu intuitive to your nature for that. Uh, various different types of magic kind of skew to different types of people. Black magic, it's great if you're, you know, powerful in a study sort of way. Blue magic's great if you're if you're hungry for something in a more feral way. Uh, it's kind of <laughs> how you are. <laughs> Sense. Cough, cough. Uh, red magic tends itself towards more flexible people, uh, people who perhaps like to absorb a wider breadth of schools, people with maybe a little bit of more of a flair for the showmanship side of things, people, you know, um, scholars, you know, real, real learner type guys. That's, that's different schools, different types of people. Uh, and again, we have a series of aptitude tests. Uh, we'll have a couple coming up here for uh, white and for even red. Uh, you could sit in with some of the colorless students that are looking for a school. <clears throat> Just see how I'll, it goes. Uh, I'll come by a little later. I need to do, perform an errand. Ah, okay. I will. We'd be happy to see you. Uh, we'll, <clears throat> we'll schedule it then. then. I know how, uh, again, you... I'm getting the impression there's perhaps some adventuring going on. I get how your lives can be a little turbulent. Um, yeah. We'll see you when you come back then, when you finish your errands or whatever. Thank Any, you. Is there anything else I can help you with? Anything shake, here? Shake head. Oh, okay. Uh, if you have the time, feel free to tour our facilities. Uh, otherwise... Have a wonderful day. You as well. Is, is it, was this the same person, or is this like? I oh, know the uh, the dean. The dean left. Yeah, she okay. she, she, like, she, she ran off. This was the the, the, uh... the the nerdy clerk at the desk. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs>
Mel's just thinking if happened to test with that easy on see surprise or and just throw into a test and go learn something. <laughs> learn. Learn. I don't wanna use magic. Yeah, just... Run me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he wasn't saying that. <laughs> you just see like the old man just bursting into the door. Oh, apparent apparently they're like I don't know. You know. British British Aslan <laughs> set, shouts that for, I'm guessing right. I don't know <clears throat> actually can on one of those tests just to shut him up <laughs> alright uh, so you said we needed to get the fuel right yes it's down at Moon Tech which she mentioned we could ask about Echo there as well perhaps yeah, I could that and we don't know how heavy the fuel is going to be. That's true. I didn't. I didn't really think about that. Well, they did a good job that Echo just learned how to triple somebody's carrying capacity. <laughs> yeah. Including my own. Yeah, yeah. No, that's <laughs> fucking including terrible. your own, which is already ridiculous. Toss it's like, all the shit on the bird. We need to carry this building home. How are we going to do? It? Put it on the chuckle. <laughs> put it on the chuckle. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, what is your max carry load, Drake? I think it's like... It's, it's in the hundreds. hundreds. It's, it's, it's whatever it's listed, plus like 300. Yeah, it's... it's At that point, nearing almost... uh, Most of the way to like a thousand pounds. Like, it's like fucking 600 or something, or like 800 or something. Like, that's so ridiculous. Like, I mean, what what's the carrying capacity for um, 18 strength? And uh, add 300 to that. Yeah. But you have 18 there. strength? Yeah. Shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Pathfinder, King Capacity Charts, da 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 da. Strength score of 18. Uh, at maximum end of heavy load, 300 pounds. So 600 pounds, yeah. Um, it's There's another formula if you're a quadruped, which I don't know if <laughs> nah, she's Echo would count. She's a the... biped. We, we're, we're, we're using some of the. Uh, as yeah. as a as a class feature of being a chocobo, she's has a heightened uh, current capacity just because of I her. Got a, got a freaking six pack under the feathers. Oh, we've got we're now. We, now we yeah, actually have here. everyone yeah, here. I just literally got out of work. Don't mind me as I lurk and eat food. <laughs> the gang's all here. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, we are on stream, so it you is. Want to yeah. Eating like wise. Yeah, so yeah I'm going to be muted. So unless you need for something. So, so like yeah. your maximum load is six hundred then. Yeah, his, his, yeah. Her, her maximum load before before literally Bethesda encumbered it kicks in is 600. And she can triple that now. And can now triple yeah. that. So yes, you could you could carry a car home if you needed to. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, it's 1,800 I, pounds. And, I, and by that logic, I could drag something that's like... Yeah. Let's, let's see. Let's take Moonbright home with us. <laughs> <laughs> All the problems solved. Pounds. <sighs> Good lord. You could. I, I could. I could drag like fifty four that fifty four hundred pounds. Uh, you could carry one and a fifth cows. Yeah, mule back words. Ant Hall masterwork backpack quad. <laughs> oh wow. You could carry almost two grizzly bears on your back. Uh, <laughs> you could carry about a heart and a half of a blue whale. I've got a, I've got a website that you just put in like a distance, of like you know this this many hundred pounds or this many hundred feet, and it gives you like things that are equivalent to that. Oh wow! All right, I I need to be right back. All right. So yeah, uh, you guys depart out the front door of the White Enclave, uh, admin building, back onto the main thoroughfare. Or you guys had enough? You guys working your way over to the fuel, or? Well, well, that'd uh, be yeah. kind of Eleanor's kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, it was just, there's just gonna be some mundane travel moments here. Uh, as you all walk, and yeah, it's, it's Tyro, Nell, Echo, and Eleanor. All four of you start working your way back. Wait, did Tyro even follow us to the White uh, Enclave? I figured he was yeah, no, he's... towards the uh, street uh, building. Headed to the what oh. building? I, I was I was half expecting to basically split off from everyone else and basically be heading towards 
the uh, it would the uh, archaeology department. <laughs> yeah, so he. It would have been weird for them to talk about him in third person while he's that standing right there and as, his nose. And as you all turn around, Tyro has been <laughs> gone the whole time, and yeah, somewhere yeah, else, no, Tyro. He, he contracted. He contracted AFK. He's just well, there. We, we we didn't mention Tyro at all. Like we said, we we had a red maze. We didn't say he was with us. <laughs> I was always, I thought I was under the assumption that you were just going to tell him, yeah, like, no, Ty was just going to do his own thing off off towards the archaeology department. I, 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 I was under the, I was under the assumption. I thought, I thought you'd said that he was just going to follow you guys. No, I said that he, that he was going to follow until we met Eleanor, then he'd probably start heading off towards the, like, history building to talk to that professor. He, he breaks off and goes his own way then, around the time that you guys split to go down that road. Pretty much. I definitely did so in such a way that uh, you didn't even notice that I yeah, left. didn't even notice. <laughs> Everyone just kept walking, and all of a sudden, where'd the red mage go? I don't know. It's like a ninja cat. Technically, natural hunter does give me a plus two to stealth, but... Uh... <laughs> red mage redemption. Oh, God. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, yeah. You guys start working your way back. You're plagued on all sides by wizards. Uh, you you do notice wizards. some of the some of these strange casters uh, in the gray robes kind of stand off to the side a little bit and are just sort of watching with like wide eyes as this tremendous display of you know first level and first level spells and cantrips goes off around you. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh-huh. You slowly work your way back over to the commons, with the big ol' basalt pillar and all the people all weaving all over the place, and presumably start working your way um, southwest down into Moon Tech. Yeah, at this, yeah, at this point you've all converged. Uh, <laughs> we have in chat now. Like I'm just, I'm just contemplating the absurdity of the the side session that everyone's here for. <laughs> it's like literally the whole party is like part I part of me wants to, part of part of me wants to like like the deep down wants to exclaim, all right, like during this travel, does anyone else find anything? But the rest of you aren't even supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know everyone was gonna be watching. Sorry. I'm saving my stuff for tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, if you've got, if you've got the time for us to do stuff, no, then... I'm, I'm trying to keep it a little bit shorter here because it's kind of an impromptu thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're just I'm trying not to drag this. Trying to keep this within kind of the two to three hour maximum frame here. Yeah, just kind of I got bang you. Bang some of this stuff out. Have another two a.m. session like last week. Mm-hmm. And we're already an hour and two minutes in by the little uh, OBS clock. But yeah, and right. as, as Eleanor AFKs the party always, uh, you travel past Chroma Square, you travel past the Ursamar buildings, all very cool and magical. Uh, you keep working your way down, you pass uh, the building for comparative literature, the cafeteria for Ursamora. You swear you see something that resembles a food fight going on in there, just with more magic, which is just the scariest version of a food fight. Um, eventually. Food fight. That you... move. <laughs> it's like fucking an- animate, animate, uh, animate mashed potatoes. Go. Go, my precious mashed potato golem. Hey. And the, the, All the, the food wolf is returns. Literally fighting each other. Mm-hmm. It's it's Pokemon, but like with radishes. <laughs> Go radish. <laughs> uh, you finally break your way into the plaza. On one side, you notice back where you came from, the corner where the strange, sort of curved, heavy timber buildings uh, with the little runes scribed along them in browns and such uh, for Samora meets the strangely more metal, more uh, thin member steel with glass panes. Uh, think uh, early uh, 20th century modernism. Uh, <clears throat> and sort of the, some early primitive sort of uh, electric lights dotting along the streets here as you go across into 
in front of what looks like somewhere between a mall and the Crystal Palace from the World's Fair, you know? <laughs> and this is the building you're supposed to be going to. Wow, this is something else. How much tech is he? It's very much tech. Very much tech. Uncomfortably much tech. Hmm? Don't think he likes all the technology. Oh. Yeah, it's alright, we're both here. And you get an encouraging rub on the wing joint. Yeah. Queen. Maybe you won't be so bad inside? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that, that's the laugh of, oh god, we're Fox. <laughs> yeah. well, now that I know where you're, the kind of background you're from, Echo, I won't let that happen to you again. Queen. Stay close to me. We're just here to pick up the fuel and then we'll leave. Huh, you guys go on side? I guess so. Yep. You push through the sort of wide double doors. Uh, there's like a whole bank of double doors. You push your way inside. Huge atrium space. Uh, as you kind of step forward onto the main axis here uh, and you look at a map, you realize you're in a ring of wide uh, three-story corridor. Uh, it stretches to your left and your right as you sort of join up with it. And above you is a glass canopy, uh, you know, thin steel weaving overhead with uh, panes of glass running all the way down as far as you can see. Uh, this way, this way, you know, like, mm -hmm. like, literally hundreds of feet that way, like almost a thousand feet that way of just building. Uh, you see shops, it looks like, yeah, the different floors, maybe different offices, uh, <clears throat> some areas that almost look residential. Like It's like a tiny town just in one building. And you immediately find a directory, and right there, map of the building, immediately under it, you see off to your left... Uh, at the end of the bit is where the student union's uh, office is. Uh, all of that stuff. Well, I guess we're going this way. And you guys walk for some span there. Uh, where, are you, where are you following? As and as as by the way, Echo, as, as they've gone in here, it's very wide open. It's very bright. It's not like necessarily what you remember but it is there's metal everywhere there's electricity everywhere there's tubes there's urns of things and uh you know steel drums and it's all a little reminiscent of what you remember very wary follows <laughs> trusting eleanor She looks back. She's she looks back. She's been looking back at you every now and then while we're walking. <clears throat> very, very visibly shaking. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should wait outside with Echo. She does not seem to be happy to be in here at all. Yeah. She'd stop walking. Yeah, you're probably right. We'll see you when you let the fuel in. Yeah, I'll be out in a few yeah. minutes, hopefully. Just sort of lead Echo out. F follows, follows the Nell because okay, get out of here. Not not cool. Not coming. Mm -hmm. yeah, hurry, walk. Hurry, walk. Hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> and the pair of you split out the front door. You came back through, and you're outside again in the plaza with all the weird buildings. Uh, Eleanor, you continue forward, presumably. Uh, after maybe five minutes of walking, you make it all the way down to the other end of the 
this sort of mall structure and you find the office you were looking for like right there that's it you've you've passed at this point cafeterias you pass something that kind of looked like a uh like a, a gift shop that has you know big old t-shirts that say moon tech on it they got like they're <laughs> probably shit. like 75 dollars a t-shirt like <laughs> uh, you make it out of the office you go on inside yeah, I guess after taking a quick look around, yeah, just open the door. You slide the door open and step inside, and there's somebody there, kind of at a desk, that kind of look up at you. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> what has possessed you to wear such armor in this place? Uh, well, uh. fuck you too. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Do you expect to get into a fight here? Uh, pardon me. I am Nitus Eleanor from Lullen. I'm here to pick up our Aether Fuel delivery. Ah, all right. Right this way. And he kind of gets up and kind of rubs one eye and steps off his little uh, chair thing. And slowly starts working his way down the hallway. Uh, you recognize this is a... Anumu. Is one of those, like... Oh, one of the furry... Piggle. Flush. Yeah. <laughs> furry, fluff, fluffy, quiet hunchbacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he leads you back through a corridor. Uh, you go out sort of a back door to this sort of office area, and you wind up in what looks like a depot, or like a storage building. Uh, if it, Basically a garage, if... <laughs> Like a motor pool kind of garage sort of thing. Mm. You know, there's lots of pretty <clears throat> cool vehicles around and containers with different fluids. And there's like pumps and things have blades and things have wheels. And like, this is some weird stuff. Yeah. And he walks you over to a, what looks like a, um, a metal square with an upright cylinder sat on it. Uh, probably... Uh, probably four and a half feet high, probably two and a half feet in diameter. Just, just sitting, just oh, there on the ground. Well, All right. here it is. Uh, enjoy. And he turns and he leaves. What a prick. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter. Fuel's here. Mm -hmm. Let's see, how heavy is this thing? <clears throat> uh, what are you trying to pick up? You're trying to pick up the, the she, cylinder, she's or you're trying she... to pick up the platform? Well, the platform's just on the floor, right? Yeah, it's just a metal square. Right, she's just giving it a... She's not actually trying to lift it. She's just giving it, like, a test pull she... just to see how heavy it is. You kind of reach out <laughs> and get your arms around, and you, <laughs> you squat a little bit, and... Ooh... That's very heavy. It's <laughs> probably close to 600, 700 pounds. Like, it's... It's not something you could comfortably lift. Even you, strong knight. Yeah. Can you drag it? Probably not oh. without s scraping the floor <laughs> like a bitch. You do, notice, you do notice the metal square that it's on does have a handle. That goes up to about uh, shoulder height. A couple of... Work? I wonder if it works like the that one vehicle the my lord uses. Hmm. You walk over to inspect that. Yeah. As you kind of look over the handle, it does have buttons on it. Okay. And you're not sure what the deal is with them. You can make a knowledge technology check if you want. She's not trained in it, so she's just going to push buttons. You, oh God. you look at it and you mash buttons, <laughs> and I am rolling some fucking D100s. Oh, yeah. Wild button pressing. Okay, I gotta, I gotta get what they denotes to in my head here. I'm just imagining Jermon just all the way in Lowland going, why do I suddenly have a feeling of impending doom? <laughs> Okay. Well, look at the plus side, at least your hand won't grow a foot long. As, as you kind of mash buttons on the handle... Suddenly, the cylinder and the panel that it's on uh, 
begins strafing left at high speed. It lifts off the ground probably about an inch and just sliding left at like uh at about fifteen feet around, like at half of your oh, full movement speed okay. left. Uh, oh she's gonna chase it. <laughs> oh no wait, no different button, different button. <laughs> uh, as you grab the handle and, and fuss with the buttons for a couple minutes, it you you get a good grip on it now as you as you push them to keep it from getting away from you. And eventually you kind of discern that there's a an order to sort of forward and backwards and left and right and like you can kinda of just let it idle and drag it. Uh and it's a little floating cart. Okay. Okay, I think I think I got it now. Meanwhile, like you you're watching like all these like guys in uh in like kind of heavy leather overalls and with like kind of goggles uh, uh, askew slightly on their heads, like kind of looking over at you, like what the hell? <laughs> it's 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 watching the the guy using the the concrete waxer for the first time, and it gets away from him, and he's just running after it all over the place, like. <laughs> uh, she's just gonna wave and then go back to what she was doing. Her face is red. I think the party can't see you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's got like this the, the anime face where she's just like got her her teeth clenched, mm-hmm. <laughs> bright red with the three little lines down between the two eyes, like yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I, I can do this. Mm-hmm. You okay, uh. So this goes forward. So if I do, yeah. Uh, you uh, there is a a opening, um, uh, about. A full story and a half, just straight outside from the little garage here, and we could also just go back through the way it came. And I think she's just gonna go that uh, out the door there. Okay. You Not exit. No, she doesn't want to look at him again. <laughs> you exit straight <laughs> onto the the main main throughway here, and yet again, sun shines, beautiful magical electrical lights all over the place. Uh, you you working your way back to where you parked? Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Nell Perfect. and Echo. <laughs> you, after a few minutes, about really another, you know, five or six minutes or so, you work your way back around the outside of the building and back to where the front door was where uh, Nell and Echo would have, uh, what have you been doing this time? In the intervening. Probably would have taken kind of her about 10 or 15 rest. minutes to do this. So. Yeah, basically been rest. trying to comfort Echo while looking yes. at the building all the way across the side, going, I should probably go in there soon. Mm-hmm. After about ten minutes, about five minutes there, five minutes back, Eleanor comes proudly wheeling this strange floating metal thing with a big ol' urn of, you know, bright, bright blue Mountain Dew on it. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, it's the same things from uh, the uh, machine we saw at the mm-hmm. uh, Crescent. She'd stroll up. Oh, okay, I got it. Good to hear. Uh, now I need to do something at the. I believe that's the chemistry building over there. Uh, you're free to wait if you want, but I don't expect you to. Well, I, I'm a little concerned about just wheeling this thing all the way back to the inn. But I suppose I'll have to. Well, how heavy hey. is it? Just looking at the. What was that? How heavy is it? It's not heavy at all, actually. Then at least, what's... at least while it's on this thing. What's the problem with wheeling it? Just not. Hmm. Well, you've you've seen how things are further into the city. Uh. I don't. Matt? I don't want our. Uh, I don't want our fuel to get hit by something. <laughs> right. I, don't know how, uh... I don't. I don't know how sturdy this urn is. <clears throat> Hmm. I don't know if there's really a side way around. Suppose I could. Maybe I could get it down to the docks, and they could store it for us until we're ready to leave. It's actually not a bad idea. Um. Let's see here. Let's check my bag real quick here. <laughs> Do I have enough inventory space for like? 700 pounds of metal <laughs> cylinder. Metal oh, and glass it's cylinder. Gonna, it's, not, it's not going to fit in her bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
magic pockets. <laughs> would this would this hover cart still be applying like seven hundred pounds of pressure to whatever's underneath it? Like, uh, what's, I mean, it would need to be it, it. Um, you know, just heavy things and really, really heavy things and boats don't usually mix. Seven hundred pounds would be fine. Yeah, no, I'm not, on a boat would it would be fine. Be, it's but, fine. But, but like a dinghy. Like no. Nah. I mean, it feels like a hover cart, so I don't think it, it's actually. It's not actually I touching don't, the ground. So it it I is don't, it is based on I, and yeah, uh, what what the the the, the bit of physics intuition uh, she's having here, Cam's having here is 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 apt. Uh, it's, yeah, I don't have anything in mind. I was just I was just asking out of raw curiosity. Oh. Basically, the thing would need to be able to push up hard enough to <clears> to like cancel <throat> out the weight of what's on it. So yeah. effectively, like if if you put your hand under don't this run thing, over people's toes. yeah, if you put your hand under this thing, it would be like being driven over by that much weight. About like, Ooh. Yeah. <clears throat> and again, it's uh, distributed by a square of the surface <laughs> area. Like it's it's a plane. There's the whole thing with planes and like the ground and. It's, it's, but it's, it's still not stuff, a good but... idea to 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 just you know. Mm -hmm. Wave your hand under there and, and be like, huh, that's kind of neat. It would more be like, wave your hand under there and just start screaming. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, you just have to get it towards a dinghy and take it off that cart thing, wouldn't you? I, Good luck getting it off. I don't... I don't know if I can lift this. No. Uh, Echo? <laughs> yes, Quee? <laughs> yes, Quee? <laughs> Is it possible for you to push this so you could... uh? So Eleanor can get this on the boat later. Quick. Well, uh, if you need to go take care of what you need to go take care of, I'll, I'll get this to the harbor. Okay, sounds good. She's gonna reach into her bag and uh, pull out her blanket, covered up. Oh, uh, um, and as as you as you glance around here, uh, walking across this square, this floating cart full of fuel is not the weirdest thing you see. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. there are some people with similar floating things full of uh, spare parts. You you swear you see a couple things that kind of resemble the little speeder that uh, Nell used back in uh, Lolan, <laughs> mm -hmm. kind of just wibbling around through the roads. You know, she just wants to cover it up because she's, she's going to be taking it like a mile, like like two, two, two and a half miles, three miles <laughs> this over way. There, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so... over there. Wait, you're still taking it through Mage Hell there. Yeah, that's what she's worried about. <clears throat> uh, uh... Just going to be trying to be careful. But yeah, she's going to be walking it uh... all the way down there. So, <clears throat> Actually, now that I think about it, if you want, I need to meet someone in that building. I can ask them if they know maybe of a side path that will take us to the docks right. without going through the magic wing. I mean, it's worth a shot. Oh. All right. But I'm going to stay with the cart. We... This is probably worth a significant amount of kill. I, most, most likely. Don't blame you. Well, see you in a bit. Start heading okay. to the... I'm assuming it was a chemistry building. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's just going to stiffen up, go into her NPC guard pose and then just wait <laughs> yes what do you need civilian <laughs> just repeated dialogue yeah oh, this ain't an important guy I better just walk off <laughs> okay so I'm waiting and I'm going in uh, and uh, Echo were you sticking with uh, Eleanor oh, where is she I, I... <laughs> Where, where is Nell going exactly? Uh, Nell appears to be going to the chemistry building. Eleanor is standing by. I guess I'll wait with Eleanor. All right. I'm just uh, waiting by the cart. I don't want to leave it. So. <clears throat> uh, Nell, you let me just pass to you. Because our party you. splits up even further. <laughs> Not that far, thankfully. Oh, poop, poop. This is a city, not a dungeon. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, you split up and you're working your way over to the chemistry building? Uh, yep, I'm pretty sure that's where, that's where Orsensi was. Alright. Uh, you 
wander your way over there. Eventually, you find a, a doorway in. <sighs> Walk into the front door. Uh, this looks like it's uh, sort of offices and lecture space. You find a directory on a wall, and you look for a name. How are you holding up, Will? I'm, I'm doing fine. Okay. <clears throat> uh, after a few minutes, just skimming through, you find her. Uh, you find little Aline Trueshot. You know, she's going by Trueshot right here. Uh, wait, really? Huh. Yeah. Wow, Dad would kill her. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you start working your way through the corridors and stuff. Eventually, you find sort of find like a faculty office level. Um, you find an area that looks like it's kind of uh, kind of professor stuff, and you find an area that looks kind of more like graduate student stuff. And you find a name, a little placard on the side of a room. So yeah, yeah, a little office. You poke your head inside. Uh, yep. Uh. You look inside, nobody's there. Well, I can tell why I went here, so... <laughs> <laughs> so there's no one in there at all? There's no one in there at all. Uh, you go ahead and make a... Uh... You turned in survival? Uh... <laughs> you ask that after the murder chicken. Um. <laughs> I, I mean, I have two points in it. Uh, yeah. I would make a survival check. We should. Uh, okay. Nice. As you glance around the room, you somewhat intuitively pick up that wherever she's gone, she's left in hurry. Uh, you notice stuff's been kind of shuffled to the side and stuff. You notice uh, spaces where things presumably were, sit were sitting for a long time that have been moved. Like, you see what looks like the silhouette of a heavy backpack. Uh, looks like she bundled some stuff up, kind of wrecked her office, and darted out the door really fast. Well, no. Uh, so we didn't leave any type of, like, paperwork behind or anything? Uh, no. No. <laughs> All right. Is there any like any like pen or paper or anything nearby? Uh, you yeah. There's there's paper everywhere, and if you find a uh, some sort of fountain pen sort of thing on the table. All right. Uh, I'm assuming there's ink in it, or there's some ink nearby. Yeah, it, it it's it seems to contain its own ink. It is a wondrous device. Okay. Well, isn't see all fancy? Um... <laughs> this whole this whole area is fancy. All right, uh, I guess I'm leaving a note because I'm not going to search this entire building because I don't know fuck all what's in here. Basically, just going to leave a note <clears throat> saying, hey, uh, drop by. Uh, Grunkle Oris said that you're in this area now. Looks like you're doing pretty well if you want to speak with me. And I leave like the address of like the end we're staying at. Uh -huh. And I guess that's it there. And as as you're uh, as you're kind of finishing up, uh, you you hear from the doorway behind you, "Hey, what 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 are you doing in there?" Okay. Yeah, and well, what they're going on right now? Or... I don't think we had any that weather, but welcome back. We lost it for a minute there. I mean, our internet has been restored. Uh, so yeah, you you are are going through your uh, writing another letter. Cindy so pokes in the head by by the doorway. Hello, can I help you? Okay, turn around. Uh, some random woman. I uh, yes, actually, uh. I was looking for Aline. Is do you know? Yeah, this is on? this is her office. Um, yeah, she she's not here right now. Uh, who who are you? Uh, her sister. <laughs> her Aline has a sister. Why am I not surprised he never says anything? 
<sighs> yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to. No, she's she's gone right now. Uh, she's headed headed south. Do you know where south? I'm yeah, sorry. I'm, no. I'm uh, not from around here. After the earthquake, a lot of the faculty from, from a lot of different departments uh, went down to the dig site. After things started to be revealed after from the ground shaking, there's one of these pillars. Do you remember the? You kind of like you, you had to have seen that by now. Uh, there's one uh, of those that we've been esca- excavating south of the city. Um, I guess the shaking stirred something up, and they've people have been heading down there in a hurry. Well, you said it uncovered something. Yeah. It's exciting times, I guess, but. You know what exactly was uncovered? Not like I've... she's like in in full curiosity mode right now. I, I don't think we we really have a good grasp, but it was something, some ruins or something. Uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of information back about it. I've it's literally like a day old now. Like they're they're just digging. So where exactly is it south? Like I'm looking on the map. Ah, uh, here. Let me. Let me pull up my map. <laughs> Pulls out a map of Moonbird Island. Uh, and you notice, down here, a uh, pillar dig site. Okay, yeah, then is it just a hop, skip, skip, and a jump? God damn it. Yeah, it's over there. Also, wow, I just noticed this. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. I... Well, uh, if C gets back before then, I left a note for her just to contact me. I mean, I'm not going to lie, I'm sort of curious to see what's down there myself, but... Uh, okay. Uh... If C doesn't get my letter for whatever reason, just tell her that uh, Nell came by to drop by, uh, came by to see her. Nell. Okay, sure. It's nice to meet you. I'm kind of... I'm just an office buddy here. Yeah. Funny. Uh, and she kind of like points. It's one of those like where there's like the two offices and they're kind of right one one door than the other door and then like because they're in pairs just by the nature of how it's staggered. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll tell her you were here. Uh, wait, you said you're her partner. I don't suppose he speaks about her family often, does she? Ah, uh, no, not really. I think her uncle ago. lives here or something. Hey, Grandfather yeah, he, maybe. Uh, uh, Great, great uncle. He definitely told okay. me that she was working here now because he never told me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think she's kind of like that a little. I don't know. She's she's cool though, and I. It's nice to meet you. Um, yeah. Thank you for that. I'll maybe I'll head down there myself. Who knows? I just head out. Bye. I guess. Goes back into her office. <laughs> I said thank you and laughed. I knew that was a reply. Eleanor. So sort of silently cursing. Why did it have to be so fucking far away? <laughs> if we ran there and back, I would have never known. <laughs> you work your way back over to uh, Echo and Eleanor. As I recombine you guys. Hey, how'd it go? Uh, C wasn't in, unfortunately. So. Oh, you guys don't even see. I didn't get directions. Oh well. Uh, I did not think about this for the moment. Well, I guess we'll just need to be careful then. I'm just not noticing. I have enough <laughs> names enabled for these anyway. <laughs> He has to see the labels. Well, uh, let's see, I sort of just like eye Eleanor up and down. Uh, how intimidating can you be? Uh, well, <laughs> I guess I'm trying. You'd be, you'd be surprised. <laughs> kind of, right. kind of on Chef's heels there. All right. Well, she's gonna go ahead and pretend to be threatening towards Nell. I go ahead and make an intimidate check. I'm gonna give you the aura on this because I'm actually trying to see how scary. Oh, you're, you're actually boosting my intimidation. Yeah. Okay. Oh god, I feel angry now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. 
<laughs> oh god. Eleanor is terrifying when she wants to be. Oh my god. On a scale from one to twenty, she is a thirty-seven of scary. Oh, <laughs> Even. Uh, how about you? <laughs> Teach me how this works. You stand in front of us and you scare the shit out of any students get, that get near us. She just like dropped into like her final boss stance, like <laughs> standing up straight, dark under the eyes. Just. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> then she's back to her friendly self again. Yeah, I, I can do that. Hey, we, we, we good. We good. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Sorry. I asked for it. I asked for it. God, the dice, that's that's the best I could do. Sounds of crit. I'm I'm kind of imagining um, Eleanor. If anyone's familiar with uh, False King Alon, when you first walk in the room, like that pose. Yeah. I'm just imagining Eleanor and Chef getting into like an edge off right now. <laughs> that would be something entirely different. Competitive edging. Yeah. <laughs> Competitive edging. <laughs> Again, maybe something entirely wow. different. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you guys. Actually, actually, that should. Oh yeah, you gave you gave me a plus four. That should be a thirty-eight. Uh yeah. Let's anyway. Just... <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap! Yeah. Oh, I need the intimidate for taunting. So. Just keep plus going. I'm gonna continue giving you that or or and uh, hopefully yeah. some students will be stupid enough. And so, Echo, Eleanor, Nell, start working your way back up to the commons, basically, yeah. Basically, 15. Yeah, your, your, your intimidate is basically my, uh, my diplomacy. <laughs> and essentially my perception. Because <laughs> mine's a 14. <laughs> and my axe. <laughs> and my I knew axe. it was common. I knew it was common. <laughs> But yeah, you should work your way back up, past comparative literature, there's some alleyways, past the cafeteria, the food fight still rages. Um, work your way back up to uh, past Chroma Square and the commons. Uh, you guys cross a little bit further, you know, kind of on the straight diagonally rather than sticking to the edges to kind of stay away from any errant wizardry from the... Uh, for us tomorrow. Um, yeah. Yeah, just pass by. Keep going. Meanwhile, in this intervening time, uh, Tyro <clears throat> has, by this point, made it all the way over to, uh, presumably where he was headed, over to the archaeology. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh,. <laughs> Where, how, how, what, what else do you guys want to do here? Uh, I think we'd just be heading to like the docks at that point. Uh, so, depending on, considering we have no bird or whatever, by the time we're here, I'm assuming everybody else would be doing something here. So, yeah, no, so there's, there's kind of a, well, there's, there's going to be some simultaneous time managing. <coughs> um, uh, how much time has passed basically since they started doing all this? Because the bird that I gave. Nell had about four and a half hours at the end of the last session. I wasn't even it. counting the bird, to be honest. No. Uh, from where you guys, is it, it, we resumed right from where you guys were leaving with Oris. Uh, you walked up to the White Enclave. You walked back around. Uh, and was, what's the distances here? Whew, okay, uh, like, what's that, like a half hour there? Maybe 40 minutes back, so that's about... <clears throat> hour 10 ish, then going into chemistry building, finding her there. It's probably like an hour 30 ish, then walking all the way back here. It's probably almost another hour of range on you guys. So that's um, maybe two hours, two hours, 15 minutes to where you guys I mean, are right now. Unless I gave the bird to uh, Eleanor, or Echo was letting Eleanor uh, ride her, if you <clears throat> probably wasn't even counting as a factor for travel distance. Well, no, I'm I'm more or less going in a way that I could actually kind of help you get that stuff onto the wharf as well. Ah, right. But that's why I was asking how much time it basically passed uh-huh. to see if the thing had, if the magic had basically just faded finally. So uh, if, if they have, they had four hours when you first when you first cast them, you you'd probably make it to the wharf with like 
10 minutes to spare before these things run out at that yeah, point. I think, I think it was four and a half, because I think you said it was basically oh, four an hour and a half. half. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it was about an hour and a half to get down there, plus speak to Professor Oris, and then, you yeah. Yeah, you'd, you'd have a bit then, just a little bit. Okay. It's just because you're... It's the walk over to Oris, and the walk back to the White Enclave, and the walk back to the uh, uh, Moon Tech Student Union, and then... Lecture, ah, I forgot course. the lecture. Yeah, no. Then, like, probably another 30 minutes. So, yeah, no. With that corrected math, yeah, like, you got 10 minutes left by the time you get to the wharf. Okay. <laughs> it's all a game of estimates, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll put you guys different colors on these. <sighs> okay, you guys just heading up to the wharf? Uh, yeah. Actually, since we're in this area, uh, I ask Eleanor if she thinks that she can get the, uh, the <clears throat> boat with the Echo, no problem. Yeah, I'll be alright. Okay, because uh, I promised Jeff I'd look around here. I'm not going to, I'd rather do it just Saturday, so I have something to do, but I'd probably be sticking around the, let's see, what was it? Is there a history building around here? Let's see. Uh, yeah, just uh, east of Chef. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, yeah, history, geology, right fucking there. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably stop about here. Because I'm going to be heading toward the history and geology building, but I can do it until the main session tomorrow, so there'll be something to do. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, I don't know. I've I've lost the clock because of the uh, <laughs> the split there, but it's, it's we're only we're probably nearing what two hours at this point. Uh, you guys work your way up and around there. Uh, you enter into the ivory towers and pretty brick of uh, Northern Moonbright University of Northern Moonbright. Presumably, is where you'd be splitting off here. Mm -hmm. oh, Sorry to give you a marker. <laughs> Break you guys apart there. <laughs> This one's like, Nell. I'm nearby. Chef's nearby. This yep. one's everyone but Nell. There we go. Um, you guys work your way around and up into the wharf. Um, uh, you moved the wrong marker. <laughs> nope. Wrong guy. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Swip, swip. <laughs> uh, hey, Echo and Eleanor. Nice You're way up there. You also still have Tyro's uh, bird with you then to help you unload. As Nell okay. dismounts for the the split, uh, make your way over to the wharf. <laughs> How long has passed? Yeah, no, by because you guys slept the night. Uh, yeah, by by now the the guy who you guys came in with the ferry you guys came in on is already gone. <laughs> uh, so yeah, where where are you going here? What you doing here? You looking for just a warehouse? <laughs> Yeah, she's looking for a dock worker, pretty much. Um, they're they're all over the place. Yeah, I guess she's just gonna approach a random guy. Go ahead and make a sense motive check to find a oh, man okay. of greater repute. Yes, oh, discerning, discerning among all of the dock workers. All right. <laughs> Are you gonna regret me splitting off? <clears throat> As you right. just profile the dock. All right. You you glance around. You you find a guy with a you know, kind of a brown vest and khakis and he's just carrying something and you kind of you know, you he kind of turns like um, yeah hello there uh, I was hoping I could find uh, a place I could store this for our group until we're ready to leave Moonbright uh, uh, you, know you know who I should talk to for that? oh, there's a there's a warehouse at the end of the dock here you could rent space at. Uh, kind of a storage place. Uh, that's quite a bit of aether fuel you got there. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you just keep your keep your wits about you. It's that stuff's worth a fortune. Just making you aware. Uh, into the dock, uh, into the 
corridor here on the left, warehouse. Right. If they charge you more than a gill a day, they're overcharging you. So, yeah. Okay. I, I, you know, <clears throat> have, enjoy. And he walks up, just carrying his thing. That's like <laughs> you see, like him sweating, like oh god, yeah. this thing. <laughs> that voice. I wonder if that guy's a bonga. <laughs> yeah. Sadly, lay on hands. He, cures he was in fact a bonga, just. <laughs> Because yeah. it's fine. <laughs> Sadly, I can't help him. I can cure health, not fatigue. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, yeah, I guess yeah, going you, over there then. You mark your way over there. You find it looks like some sort of warehouse building. Um, go in the front door. Wheel your little cart in. There's a guy there. who's a got a big old note keeper with a big old ledger. Uh. They, you guys talk a little bit. You you explain, oh, I'm trying to keep the stuff, uh, waiting for when we leave, want to keep it somewhere safe. And he offers you for uh, for three gil a day, you could store there at their facility. Hey, excuse me. That's a little pricey for just storing. Intimidating doggo, go! Uh, <laughs> go ahead and make either an intimidate or a diplomacy check. 37. I'm not gonna roll that again. Oh, you God. could. Do we? I got a one. I got a one. I'm gonna get a one. I'm gonna get a the one. Edge, watch. The edge is cheering you on <laughs> from the other side of the city. Yeah, watch this. <laughs> Another 19 makes this. <laughs> you did almost as good as you could have done. <laughs> Well, he Holy rolled the exact same thing, just no bonus. Yeah, no. You're Never your, mind. Your big Roll as, 20 is nice when we're not doing a full, full session. As you look at this guy with just the steely glare. Excuse me. And he's just sweating. That's a little pricey. Sweating, sweating. sweating. <laughs> um, uh, my, my apologies. Uh, out of town and all that, I just thought... <clears throat> for you know maybe a gill a week you could store it here that's fine Old. <laughs> that's better uh here could i get a name for the um big old ledger <laughs> again like who, who's who's did you have a company uh yes uh let me just let me just write their names down He's just gonna put like a side note going, Eleanor, the knight of Oh dear God, don't piss her off. <laughs> Doggo she, of fear. Uh, she's been practicing the guard's glare. <laughs> Alright, so she's gonna write down everybody's names. Mm-hmm. Uh okay. And like he, he's like the list is, you know, Earn Earnwist shipping, like uh carriers united. Eleanor Tyro, chef of the Deco, <laughs> fucking list, the list of adventurers. Okay. It's like, <laughs> uh, okay, sure. Uh, you're <clears throat> sorry. We don't really have an official company name. <laughs> That's fine. It's all fine. Uh, just don't hurt me. Yes, please don't. <laughs> please don't fucking eat me. <laughs> and he he shows you down a hallway, and you find, and he brings you to um. Uh, a series of kind of almost safety deposit box vault things. Uh, the size of uh, closets, almost. He opens one up for you. You wheel the cart inside. It fits, like, to the exact dimensions of the cart. Door closes. Uh, he locks it and he hands you the key. Thank you. Well, uh, that's all you need. So, uh... <laughs> Uh, get in. I'll give him a couple gil. Oh, uh, all right. Well, this will be good for another for two weeks or so. Uh, I'll keep jot you down for that. Drop the lid again. There it is. <laughs> all right. And he walks you back out, and he kind of gets back on his little stool, and he just goes back to his little record keeping. Have a good day. Um, you do. 
She's walking out with a grin on her face. <laughs> she got a bargain. <laughs> You know, he's just like, Bob, you'll never uh, believe what I just ran into. <laughs> it's a giant wolf that's 12 this, feet tall. This and wolf, wolf woman. God. <laughs> and meanwhile, Chef is probably just thinking, I sent a good use of edge there. <laughs> uh, meanwhile. I could call it a competitive edge. <laughs> Nell, as as he's going over doing that, are you are you investigating? Uh, you investigating uh, the what chef sent you after? We we could probably get that uh, really quick here. Oh, sure, I can do that. I just do regular just diplomacy gather information. Yeah, go ahead and diplomacy gather information around in the. Uh, I'll move you over to the history geology area. <laughs> okay. Uh, come on, no whammies. <clears throat> Take it. Thirty, nice. Um, kind of going around and looking for for the names that that uh they gave you this uh this prattle and tick. Uh, you learn that there was a a somewhat younger married couple that lived uh in this area. Uh, one of them, oh. an auto desk blip, go away. Uh. <laughs> One of them was a professor of history. The other one was a professor of geology. Uh, they lived together. They had a house kind of in the area. Um, one day, uh, after quite after quite a few days of of Doctor Prattle not coming to uh, study, somebody went to investigate, and in finding their home, they found that it hadn't. No one had been in or out in quite some time. They went in the door. They found uh, Tick, the the husband, uh, slain in on the sort of on the stairs into the basement of the building. Uh, they couldn't find uh, they couldn't find Doctor Prattle anywhere for days until they found a section of overturned dirt in the backyard and they found her body in there. Oh boy. Uh, the two were brought, and you know that they, there, you were, you, you get, it's explained to you. There's a, there's a cemetery nearby that they were buried together as a couple, uh, and that's where they are now. And it's a very sad story. Nobody really knows what happened. Hmm. I wonder why Chef wants to know about this. Uh, did they mark where the sh uh, cemetery is? Yeah, <laughs> they mark it for you on your map. It's <laughs> right down here in this corner. Around the corner of uh, University of Northern Midbride. Hmm. Well, I told Jeff I'd find the information. No need for me to really go there, so. Actually, would I even run into Chef while I'm doing this, or did he just go fuck off somewhere? Ah, uh, he's, he's gone fucked off somewhere <laughs> for a little bit here. Where, um, I guess during during this day, like. I don't know. Like I said, I was kind of interested in the in the the Magitech studies and aerospace engineering. Like, mm -hmm. we, we do. don't need to, we don't need actually we don't actually need to do anything. Sure. With that. Just chef is over there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll go ahead and move you because many hours have have transpired by now. Yeah. If, if I don't run into them, I'm probably just gonna wait at the uh, end for everyone else. Parking unless you else here. To me. Okay. Like, yeah. Come back. Everybody's gotta come back for dinner anyway. Like, yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not traversing the entire city to look for one rat. Sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Never Wouldn't do it for my sister. I'm not doing it for for you, Chef. Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and move some of these to the token layer for you guys to see. All right. Uh, graveyard. <coughs> Grumble Oris. Well, once you guys have found Eileen's office. Uh, what the fuck else? You've already been the mage wars. Uh, ah, and you're. In apartments, you know where that is. Little dropping pins, is leaving, revealing the pins everywhere. So you guys know where is things that... are. Okay. <laughs> you see, I'm look around on the map. This is for reference. Mm -hmm. So yeah. There's people, people all over the city here. <clears throat> well, that takes care of Nell's tasks. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. And at this point. Uh, the hours passing after uh, noon already. You're kind of pushing into uh, late afternoon, early evening. Like where it's just starting to get a little bit dimmer in the sky. 
So how is this gonna work when we when we do stuff tomorrow? Like mm-hmm. probably gonna is do. It, is it just like a case of if we want to do stuff today, we go, we do it now, <laughs> or is it? And then when we do session tomorrow, it's gonna be time has passed. Uh, when when we go to do, I mean, that kind of depends on what people want. If 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 nobody really wants to do anything in this day that we've kind of moved over in this chunk here, uh, we can just <laughs> say time has passed. If people want to do stuff in this window. People can go do stuff in this window, which I imagine is what people want to do. Uh, if 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 it's things that that are that are kind of small that people want to take care of out of things, like for instance, if anybody wants to go sit in any lectures, uh, we can handle that out of between sessions and the sort of stuff for that. If people want to go <coughs> to various places, we can do some uh, out of game roles. Otherwise, we can handle it. Start a session next time. The point uh, of, of this was just like get some stuff side uh, yeah, time. Yeah, because we have so go, much. We have so like, many side session. quests that we've had to be doing here, so we've kind of mm-hmm. this is a way to fluff that to to grab half the party and wrangle them all now, and then maybe wrangle the other half of the party later, so we can get this out of the way a little bit quicker. Mm-hmm. All right, it's just because like a whole day passing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and if and Coke, it, Coke has Coke has got someone to to. Yeah, lost yeah, and you've you've got you got cocaine visa. And if you if you want to, you can message me the details on how you, on what you want them to be going around and doing, or we can run that at the start of next session, whichever way you want that to go. Um, and same thing for same thing for chef, and chef's wanderings. If you just want to like, oh, I want to sit in a lecture on aer- on aerospace, and you pay some money or whatever, you just literally just sneak in. We give some rolls between <laughs> sessions and we can look at the outcome, or we can RP that at the beginning of next session if you want to. For now, that's kind of where we're gonna, I guess, is where we're calling it for the little side thing we're doing here. Then, right? I'm, I'm, okay. I'm content with just a side roll. So, yeah, okay. yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, I guess. yeah, Ellie would probably U-turn, go back for the white magic lecture. Basically, uh-huh. I'm assuming like the beginning of the session is if people want to do stuff and be like, uh, meanwhile, people <laughs> did this, and it just focuses on them, and then when it goes back to like present time, then other people get focused on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, this is kind of what I'm trying to figure out here. I'll probably keep following Eleanor and see if I can't sit on that lecture, too. Right. You know. oh, for, yeah. the majority, for the majority of, of, of the daytime hours, if Koge would be, I don't know, being a good girlfriend question mark and like <laughs> let's go sightseeing i guess yeah. <laughs> i've been roped into this let's go mm. okay yeah no that would mostly just be doing uh, fucking... mostly Internet. continue to search for professor dices and contemplating how the fuck he's gonna actually explain how the hell he knows about dimension door because mm. <laughs> no. i'm assuming that's not well known so it's like yeah it's very not yeah. well known <clears throat> i mean or us give you an out I'm, the fact of the matter is that if he doesn't even know about it from from Sid, there's no way she told him. There is absolutely no way. So she'll see through that shit so quick. It's like I won't even <laughs> bother to rule. Wait, wait that. Be truthful. You could just say that uh, you saw someone using Dimension Door. Was curious how it worked, and your someone in your party knew that knew a professor in Moonbright and brought it up and said that that person would be the best person to ask. Yeah, possibly. I guess it depends upon what she looks for in archaeology that I might be able to play off of, but regardless. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how mm-hmm. they can play this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for, for the purpose of Cook Avis, uh... Where where did you guys want to sightsee? We we could handle that right here real quick at the tail end of this if you wanted. Uh, it would be a case of I have no idea what anything where anything is in this city. Let's go get a map and mm-hmm. let's make sure we can get back and then just walk in a direction and look at stuff. Okay. How does that sound? Because <laughs> oh, I that, know nothing. That that sounds great. You guys find a map. You guys find like the little. The, the thing that they hand out in the hotel lobbies of cities where it's like the things to do in the area and all the places that hotel's been paid to advertise as things to do in the area. Um, I'm not sure I want to support this, but let's go and hit up all the tourist hotspots anyway. Get that out of the way right now. And yeah, so that would be... Mm-hmm. 
uh, the 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 things the the big things they have you kind of like oh you should go and look at this is right now the mage wars are going on you should you should see them it's crazy but keep your head down and like ah oh, like look at the mystery and the wonder of our city and this ancient pillar in the middle and you should head down to uh, <coughs> Moonbright Green and and check out the green and see the great tree and all that kind of shit or like or well, next like fun. you should you should go and check out the aether line station and the majestic bridge stretching all the way to the you know like you know there's currently a giant snake on top of that so i'm not sure they're gonna let us anywhere near there's <laughs> a lot of that sort of stuff it's like why not try sitting in on some lectures Maybe you'll have an aptitude for something you didn't even know. Like, yeah. it's yeah. it's the yeah. kind of thing like you reading it. You almost want to read it with like the nineteen uh, twenties, like <laughs> you know, and back to the Zeppelin races, like mm. kind of thing. Could you be a mage? <laughs> Take an aptitude test. I'm already a mage. Yeah. You can have an aptitude in something you didn't even know about. Why not be a blue and a red mage? Because, yeah. <laughs> because that'll get my casting too much, because red mages require charisma, and although I am a phonetic individual, my uh, nuance is more intellectual. You're not you're not that likely to get past level three anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, five levels seems to do it all right for another character that I have that's very red pagey. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, it'd just be a case of oh, you're the one who wants to go sightseeing. Lead the way. And Uh-oh. she does. She's she's <laughs> fucking. She's got this pamphlet, man. She's going everywhere. This pamphlet's saying, like, I'll follow. Oh no, she's a tourist. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. You, she, she leads you over. You, she, you guys look at the mage wars. It's exactly what you saw earlier. Uh, the spells getting launched st- across. The whole, do you think? Do you think they'd all be terrified if I just dived in there and turned <laughs> into something like you know Leviathan? Ah, uh, I, I have no idea. Maybe they. Maybe you're more common to hear than that. I. Is that a common thing? Just turning into the monsters and stuff. I don't know. Not outside of, of where I come from, which I'll add is, is is not a common thing. I don't know if what I am is 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 normal for blue mages, except that I know that there is like a more intellectual study kind of blue mage, and I'm more of a consume essence blue mage, and mm. I don't know. But uh, besides, I don't think turning into the thing that just attacked them would be yeah, a very no, bright I, idea. Not a very moon bright idea. Uh, oh, God. Just like... <laughs> what am I getting myself into? Doesn't want to save me. <laughs> As Jasmine boos me from off stream. <laughs> <laughs> well, as much as I want to represent my cult, um, they can they can have their own little little wall to themselves. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's really looking for outside participants. Besides, uh, I'm not a I'm not a powerful caster or anything here, but these look like kind of basic spells. I don't know, like I've been seeing what you guys have been doing. It looks way more dangerous than this. There's a lot of like dancing lights going across the street, and it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> you do you go, buddy. Uh, well, oh, where is... Let me just um, actually open up my character sheet for a second, Beast. I need to oh, have a look you... and see what I can do, because oh. I've got to do something here. All right. I'm watching. Well, Dancing Light just had me roll a D100 to get a 44. It'll be mm-hmm. a great show. <laughs> <laughs> I, what do I have that is non-lethal? Let me have a look. Uh, I am going to. Are they are they wearing are they wearing clothes that would that would kind of show that they are different colors of mages? Or... Yes. Yeah. You, okay. you. It's a. It's a lot of them are sort of gray with uh, trimming that's either black or red or blue. 
Uh, and some of them are robes of different color that don't, aren't gray, but like it's it's all kind of intermixed. Is there any like is there like a clump of red or a clump of a clump of black? Around where like... you are, there are some reds and some blacks. Yeah. Are they kind of far away from us? Um, are they yeah. like right there? I mean, they're 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 not doing their thing. They're not like and they're not interacting with you. You, I can't stand pit. you engage. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, what's the save for sand pit? Wait, why um, are we casting magic on students? What the hell did I miss? <laughs> it is um, a reflex uh, 18 of them immobilized for 1d4 rounds. God. <laughs> they just go like waist deep into sand. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> as as you cast it into this group, only one of them falls into the sand pit. The rest of them dive out of the way real quick. Presumably, a little a little uh, on edge in the, in Adrenaline. these trying times. <laughs> <laughs> one of them gets caught, like, oh god, I'm what? What is this? <laughs> and then like they they kind of like look at it and they look around like it's I I think it's sand pit. Is there a blue mage around here? Run, run, run! <laughs> now here's a real question. If a blue mage saw her do that, could they learn it from her? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <sighs> which is, which is, like, this, that's why I kind of kept expecting you guys to go over to the blues, because that's, like, all that's going on right now in the blues. It's just blue magic. It's like, Unfortunately, I can't learn any of it. It's just like You're the watching. herds. It's just the herds of nerds standing around, like watching the high level casters cast. Like, You're did you get it? Did you get it? I, I think I got it. I think I got it that time. Like, as they just sit there rolling, rolling. watching people all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I cast the sand fit, Watch them. Like one of them. One of them falls for it. The other. The other two down. And just grab. Let's go. 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 go run. <laughs> and the two of you dart off into the commons. Uh she... And then it's just continue to follow tourist hotspots. <laughs> yeah, she brings you all over the place. You you stop by the pillar. You look at it. It's got these like little these ancient looking runes carved all over it. It still has, like the weird cracks on the ground. Like it looks very. It looks kind of alien and weird. And there's people taking pictures of it. Like you're at the uh, the obelisk at Vatican City. Like <laughs> I am gonna look at this thing because I saw it before. And then the, the, the crack and that that that's new with the whole like earthquake stuff. I'm gonna just <coughs> kind of look internally for that piece of me that's now a leviathan. Like, okay. you were mad at something because Moonbright has been here for a, a very long time, as of you. But this is you only just now started to if, if you wanted to get rid of these 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 savages you would have done so before they established themselves what's hmm. happening can i we are the same thing now you are a part of me as i'm a part of you so tell me why are you so angry why was this earthquake a thing i know that you're water not earth but come on hmm is there, is, go ahead is and there make. Internal... Go ahead and make a. What's your spellcasting mod? Intelligence. Yeah. Go ahead and make it just an intelligence check. While she's doing that, I just got a familiar phone call. <laughs> Hello, my name is Alex, and I am calling from Telstra. Your internet connection is being hacked from an overseas hacker. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> one of those. <laughs> and I was, I was like, oh, surely you'd have an IP address from the from the attacker, and you'd have a spitball of where they're from. And I, we are going to collect that information, but I wanted to notify you first, sir. <laughs> You're like, sorry, I have a Good. Linux, and then hang up. Good God. <laughs> All right. With a... Your internet's being hacked by from an hour. Not since the accident. What? Oh, God. Maybe. Or, you know, maybe they're getting more use of it than use out of it than I am. <laughs> okay. Failing internet. Anyway. Anyway. As, as you roll an 11 and you meditate trying to contact the Leviathan within you, um... 
as you sort of look at this strange pillar, you feel like I don't know, like a like a rush of water from the tip of your head to the tip of your toes. Uh like a like a waterfall but all at once. More like a lake in free fall, but through your body. And you're befuddled by this for a moment, but then it's passed. I can't use anything to help me, help me identify that no, what just happened. It's, it is very strange. It has nothing to do with any uh, any knowledges or even any uh, casting shenanigans that you have. On the plus side, that worked. <laughs> Something happened. <laughs> Are you doing okay? Um, co- co- okay. Um, Something up with the pillar? She kind of like looks at it. I don't know. I do intend to find out, though. Okay. Uh, do you want to get back to it here? And gotta... Yeah, sorry, I'm just... Uh... Looks back up at the pillar, squints at it, thinks about what just happened. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. And you guys run off yet again. Yeah. Transitioning over into the Magitek stuff. You're looking at electric lights and like people with all this weird uh, technology. You find some strange like biped thing lifting boxes in a corner. Like even it's like even just they're they're blue collar workers. This is so cool because it's got Our robots involved. Hmm? Our airship's better though. Yeah, oh yeah, no, I, all all this stuff compared to your airship, like man, your airship's just the best. <laughs> this stuff kind of looks cool and like kind of modern design sensibility way, but like it doesn't have that same kind of practical touch that you think your airship's got. <clears throat> um, oh, I think Drake's asleep. I'm, yeah. I'm so late. Oh, okay. I do. I, I, I do kind of look at all the stuff and, and just like, to, to be my airship's better. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, it's it's a great thing, but this is a, this is neat. Um, she brings you guys around to Moonbright Green. Look at the green, big old like tree canopy thing, uh, sort of garden, uh, somewhere between. Somewhere between, like, a forest and an Italian vineyard. Oh. <laughs> it's nice to see they haven't destroyed go. all of nature here. <clears throat> oh, yeah, there's lots of lots of places, lots of things, lots of unique sites. Every different zone is architecturally radically different, even, uh, from school to school. <laughs> Oh yeah, you guys have a day of it going and looking at all these things. I can turn into a tree. I can do all of the practical applications of this. But it's apparently a thing I can do since I ate one. I was very <laughs> bored. <laughs> yeah, and as it sort of starts pushing into evening and the sky gets very faintly darker, you you arrive at uh, current time with Nell and uh, Echo Eleanor. Huh? All I can think of when people want their partner to get hard, I don't think that's what they mean. <laughs> uh, hard like a tree. <laughs> okay, turn it into a tree. Oh, oh gosh. Uh, and if that's if that's where we are here, then that's where we are here. The only people who are behind in time, I guess, is um is Tyra, but we should handle that in the proper session and uh Chef is gonna get a skip forward here. With some right. messaging out of stuff. So yeah, thanks for everybody joining. Okay. Even... Kev, you wanna? Hmm? Hmm? Oh yeah, I'm just gonna say uh, for context, 
since Eleanor has Echo all alone to herself, she yeah. is going to be extremely affectionate with her. Oh, <laughs> that's <cool. laughs> um, the the beak the beak scree- scritches and like just oh <laughs> absolutely who do go bow? No one around. Very cute. About. Very cutesy. She's even going to show off her plushie that she has in her back. <laughs> you are so fucked. When Echo can talk. I know. She doesn't know that. Just wait till I get to level seven. Hey, no. <laughs> hey Jeff, guess what? Guess what Alan did? <laughs> <laughs> they will be laughing for days. Yeah. But I well, think she doesn't she doesn't know that. She's just like, oh my god, I have to burn myself. <laughs> and I think just for reference for reference when I do hit level seven, pretty much as long as Tyro and his familiar are around, let's just assume that we can all just talk to Echo normally because me having to go through and paraphrasing yeah. everything no, doesn't be annoying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Information easier, redundancy is something easier. we can cut out here, but yeah. It's easier to assume. It's something we're, we're going to hit with uh, Altasarian, I think, is just using Burke as a telephone and just have the characters back and forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless, of course, the telephone wishes to omit certain information like he always friggin' does. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just like, it's like an alien movie, man. Information's fun. <laughs> why, why do you think he's been, he's been singled out by, by an evil god? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. We're calling it there for now. We've... Got a lot of everyone's loose ends and chores wrapped up here. A uh, little bit of a side thing here. Well, I don't know how long did that go? About mm. now, close, close, close-ish to three hours. Uh, yeah. If anybody else has anything to add, we'll see you all tomorrow uh, for the proper session here. Um, I'm, I might be half an hour to an hour late. Okay. I can be like 10 then. Before um, you said you weren't certain. Mm-hmm. Sorry, well, sorry. <laughs> we'll see you all next Leaving. time. Some people might be there. Some people may be a little bit late. We'll see. We'll play that one by ear. Everyone's got work. See you next time. Bye. See ya. Bye. See ya.